buy in the off season. If you need something like a winter coat, buy it at the end of winter so you've got it for next year. Or I do this one all the time. If you need summer clothes, buy them in like August or even September. You can get a ton of stuff and then next summer you've got everything you need. Buy secondhand furniture. I find, and probably you find it as well, that the quality of furniture every year is going downhill. Fast furniture, things are changing. So what I'm looking for is secondhand furniture that's either solid wood, antique, or vintage. I'm going on Facebook Marketplace. I'm going to garage sales. I'm going to thrift stores. I love it. Today I'm sharing 35 frugal hacks that you can do in 2024. These will save you time and money. Money isn't there for the purpose of flaunting. Money is here so that it can give us options. And so today I'm going to give you all the hacks that you need so that you can have all of the options that you want. And these are small things you can start today. So let's start with food. You've heard this one before, but the first thing is to cook at home. And when I say cook at home, I don't mean like make all of these complicated recipes and go too crazy here. I'm saying cook at home, do simple recipes, things that have simple ingredients, ingredients that you're gonna use over time and you're gonna keep on using. You know, don't buy like this random ingredient that you need for one recipe only to never use it again and have to throw it away. So think cook at home, don't go out to eat. If you do go out to eat and you do go to like a fast food place, I'm gonna tell you, get the apps for the for these fast food places. You will save so much money this way. You will get tons of free things, like little freebies every time you go. We often go to McDonald's when we are like skiing. We will just stop there and it's quick and easy. My husband have, has the McDonald's app. Every time we go, we, we get like free shakes, free fries, two for one. I like to eat beans and lentils every week. So I will kind of alternate. I will buy them dried. So they're even, it's even cheaper to buy the dried ones. And they're the same. You just like add, you know, bouillon to them or broth, and then you can kind of cook them up. These are so inexpensive. They're so healthy for you. They've got tons of fiber. Just an easy idea for something you can cook that saves you money. By far, like one of the most expensive things that we do in the kitchen is food waste, right? We buy all this food, we have great intentions. Maybe it's the leftovers that we're throwing away. Maybe it's ingredients, you know, fruits, vegetables, things we never got to. So just try to limit your food waste because this will save you a ton of money. Also eat leftovers. A lot of times we put leftovers in the refrigerator and then we forget about them. So I'm just here to say, don't forget about those leftovers and really be mindful that you eat them. You know, kind of have a timeline in your mind and know I've got those in the fridge and I've got to eat them. Bake from scratch. I never buy like boxed cake mixes. I don't buy like the mashed potatoes that, that are like you can like add water and make them in the microwave. I definitely don't buy things like those rice seasoning meals. You know, they come with rice and seasoning or like the hamburger helper. You don't need to buy any of these. You can make these at home yourself for pennies on the dollar. And let me tell you something else. They will not have any preservatives or chemicals. You don't want to eat that kind of stuff. So make it at home. It is so easy to make a cake from scratch. It's literally like two more steps than the boxed cake mix. And just like as a little funny story, my daughter is 15 and a couple of years ago, she went to her friend's house and then when she came home, when I picked her up, she was like, mama, you won't believe what this person had at her house. They use a box to make a cake. This is actually like very normal. Like lots of people buy these boxed cake mixes. She just didn't know that they existed because we don't buy them. And I'm telling you not to buy them. They will save you a ton of money and they're so much better for you. If you look at the ingredients, by the way, on those boxed cake mixes, it's pretty scary. I have been looking at the analytics on my channel. Check this out. Almost 90% of you who regularly watch my videos are not subscribed. It is free to subscribe, so click that button below. That way you won't miss any of my videos. Make your own spice packets as well. I was I was just looking at the taco one in the grocery store the other day, and it was like $1.25 for the little seasoning that does like one pound of meat. I can make this at home for pennies per serving just with ingredients I have at home, like paprika and chili powder, and make your own coffee at home. You can perfect your coffee. You can make it exactly like you want. Those Starbucks drinks and other drinks are very expensive and not to mention they're full of sugar. So do your wallet and your health a favor and make it at home. Don't buy bottled water or those single serving drinks. Now, I mean, if you love them and you wanna buy them, that's fine. I just th find that they're very expensive, especially like I see people buying like the single bottles of water. 
we don't buy those at all. I mean, we don't even buy bottled water. We use a filter, but we don't buy those. We don't buy cans of pop or soda as others like to call it. We don't buy any of those single serving juices and things like that. So just something to think about if you wanna save some money because those can really add up. Grow your own herbs. I like to grow things like parsley and basil and cilantro. Anytime I go into the grocery store and I see these herbs for sale, I have like sticker shock because I know that the packets of seeds are so cheap. They last for years. You can get tons of growth out of this and you could just do it right on your windowsill. I like to use residual heat to finish up my cooking. This one is a little bit weird and I've just been doing it inherently for years. And then I thought, you know what? This is also probably like a frugal hack, but basically some of the things I do, I do not preheat my oven. So I just pop in the food and turn it on and cook it may only need an extra five minutes of cooking time when you do it that way. Another thing that I do is I always shut the oven off about 10 minutes before the recipe is done. I do this for cakes, baked goods. I do this for things that I'm cooking, like if I'm cooking casseroles or whatnot, just 10 minutes before it's ready, shut the whole oven off and use that residual heat to finish up your cooking. I also do it on the stovetop if I'm making like grilled cheese or sauteing some vegetables a few minutes before they're ready, I will shut the heat off and just cook it in the pan Use that residual heat, take, take advantage of it, especially if you have an electric stove because those stay hot after you turn them off for a long time. One of the things I've recently been doing is my grocery store, they will sell like large pizzas for $10. And these are these delicious fresh pizzas. You take them home, you can pop them in the oven. I will buy a few of those. I will take them home and I will put them in the freezer. Then this way, anytime I'm tempted to do like takeout, like say we just don't feel like cooking and it's like, oh, we should order pizza. I will just pull those pizzas out of the freezer and I will put them in the oven and I will bake them. It's about $50 minimum if we order pizza around here. So if I pull out two pizzas, that's just 20 bucks and I'm feeding everybody. We still get delicious pizza and it's saving us a lot of money. I can't tell you how many pieces of clothing I have ruined from like while I was cooking. I get oil on it or butter. Just last week, my daughter ruined a very expensive pair of sweatpants because she plopped something into some hot butter and it went all over her pants. So my tip here is wear an apron when you cook. This will preserve your clothing and keep it looking new. Speaking of clothing, let me talk about some clothing hacks here. Resist the urge to buy cheap shoes. For years, when I was in my 20s, I was buying these like $20 pair of black flats from Payless and they would get destroyed in like a month. I, I did a lot of walking. I was walking to and from work. But within a month, they looked terrible and I would have to replace them. I was probably buying 10 pairs a year, I would estimate, which is over $100. If I had just spent $100 on a pair of nice shoes, those shoes could have lasted for years. I'm certain of this. So don't do what I did. Don't learn the hard way. Just invest in good quality shoes. They will last forever. And speaking of lasting forever, my other recommendation for another hack is don't buy new shoes until your shoes have completely worn out. A lot of times people's shoes, you know, they'll, they'll see a new pair of shoes that they like and they'll say, well, these are nice. I'm just going to buy them. And then what ends up happening is you don't wear your older shoes. You just end up wearing the new ones. And then you never get a chance to wear out your older shoes. And it's kind of like a waste of money. So just kind of stretch that time in between. And if you do have old shoes, wear them for yard work or housework or anything messy. I have learned this the hard way. You don't want to get a nice pair of shoes and then go out in the garden and destroy them right away. So just make sure that you're being careful with what you're wearing for certain tasks. Mend your own clothing as much as possible. I'm not a seamstress, but I can sew a button. I can sew something when it's ripped along the seam. If you can't, that's okay. There are people who can do it. You can take it to a seamstress. This is much cheaper than buying new clothing. I also have this defuzzer from Conair. I can link it below. It is like saved so many of my things. I have saved a ton of my sweaters. I've saved some carpets in my house that were kind of getting fuzzy. And my sofa, my sofa is about five years old. It was getting lots of fuzzies on it. I just defuzzed it. It is looking like new. And then for kids, if you've got kids, I would say try to give them thrifted or get them thrifted or like hand-me-down clothing as much as possible. My kids not only grow out of their clothes really quickly, they're also really hard on it. There is nothing worse than seeing an expensive pair of pants that I've bought and then my kids are wearing it and they're suddenly sliding across the kitchen floor on their knees. Th this happens all the time. Get some thrifted clothes. You can find really good quality clo clothing for kids at the thrift store or, or for adults as well for that matter. 
but it's just a good hack so that you're not spending a lot of money on things that your kids are probably just gonna ruin anyway or they're gonna grow out of it really quickly. Okay, let's move on to some general household frugal hacks. If you can, clean your own house. Around here where I live, house cleaners are very, very pricey. Also, I have to say, no one can clean your house as well as you can. So if you can clean your own house, go for it. And clean your own car, you know, don't take it somewhere. Our, I think that car washes are up to like $20 now, so we just do it at home. I would also say wash your car less frequently than you think. It's not as dirty as you think. Don't use paper towels. These are very expensive, but not only that, they're also very wasteful. I, at this point, have stopped using them. We use about a roll per year, and the only things I'm using paper towels for right now is like if I'm doing something particularly like maybe germy, like if I have to clean a toilet or maybe we have a dog visiting and there's been some sort of an issue. Otherwise, I don't do that. Instead, what I do is I take old worn out clothing. Cotton t-shirts are great for this. You can cut them up and you can make cleaning cloths. Great way to save some money and save some paper. Use your appliances until they are completely dead. If something breaks, don't immediately think you need to replace it. We have ordered parts online. We'll call in a repair person if we need to. Just make sure that you're not getting rid of appliances before their end of life. Just use them and repair them until they're completely done. While you're brushing your teeth, shut off the water. So many people waste so much water. Speaking of water, shut off the water when you're doing dishes. I actually die a little on the inside when I see people just turn on the water and then wash their whole sink of dishes and the water is still running. I can't take it. Also go for shorter showers. I have set a timer so that I am making sure that I'm not in there for too long. I've actually got my showers on most days down to like three minutes. It's not hard and it just saves a lot of water and time. Use LED light bulbs. I am telling you, they will cut your electricity like you've never seen and they last forever. Set your thermostat at 68 to 69 in the winter and then at 76 to 77 in the summer. It may sound drastic. You may not like it at first, but you can get used to it. Just the other week, I was on Amazon and they had um, a book that I wanted. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll just buy this book used and I'll get it shipped. Then my daughter said, well, why are you doing that? Let me check our library and see if it's there. She went on and opened up the app for our library, found the book, reserved it. And then I went the next day, it was sitting right there being held for me and I picked it up. So my tip here is use the library. Even books that are like nonfiction, you would think maybe the library, they have it all. And if they don't have it, you oftentimes you can request it and then they will bring it in from another library. Okay, we are getting there. This next one, get rid of cable. This may be a scary prospect to you because it was to me and for years we were putting it off. We were like, we can't get rid of cable. This is gonna be huge. Out of all of the things in this list, this is going to make like the biggest impact on your finances. Cable has gotten so expensive. We pulled the plug a little over a year ago and let me tell you, we don't miss it. We didn't even notice. We don't think about it. There's so many other things you can do or just watch YouTube for free. There's no need to pay for expensive cable anymore. Okay, so let's talk laundry. Don't wash clothing unless it's absolutely dirty. I don't think that you need to throw something in the washing machine just because you've worn it for a couple of hours. Same with my kids. Sometimes they will wear an outfit for a couple of hours, then they'll change and then they'll change again. And by the end of a couple of days, their laundry basket is completely full to the top. I have learned I am not gonna be washing all of this clothing. It's number one, not only is it not dirty, so it's wasteful to wash it, Washing your clothes also breaks down the fabric, it breaks down the colors, they don't look as new, so your clothes don't last as long. So I've just gotten into the habit of only making an effort to wash things when they're dirty. Speaking of towels, a lot of people, I know there's like a lot of debate about this, you do not have to wash your towel after every shower. I think that that is just excessive. I know there's gonna be people in the comments below totally disagreeing with me, and that's fine. Do what you're comfortable with, but I like to at least take three showers before I wash my towels. I'm not gonna go a month without washing my towel, but I don't think one or two times is enough. I think three is kind of like that sweet spot. Use less detergent than you think. If you look on the box, the manufacturers will have you believing like, this, you need this huge cap full of detergent. You only need two tablespoons of detergent for your largest load. I have done a ton of research on this. I know this is a fact because what happens is when you use too much soap, then the soap 
doesn't rinse out of your clothing and it ends up sitting in your clothes and it creates like this buildup and this soap scum and then it smells over time. You can't get it out of your clothing. It ruins your clothes. So take my word here, two tablespoons is all you need. Wash your clothing on cold. Unless you're trying to sanitize something, like maybe you've got bed sheets that you want to sanitize or if you've got towels potentially, and don't take my word for it. I'm going to even show you on the detergent bottle. It says for use in cold water, especially if you have a high efficiency machine, the detergent works best in cold water. So try it. See what you think. You're going to save some money on your water bill. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want more ideas on how to save money, I'm going to link a video. Click on it and I'll see you over there. Bye-bye.